Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Quinton here and welcome to tutorial number two. And in this tutorial, I just wanted to give you guys a quick introduction to cPanel. So hopefully you followed along with my previous series and you bought shared hosting and you logged into cPanel and it looks something like this. If cPanel doesn't look exactly like this, uh, you can switch themes. So just make sure that you're using the paper lantern theme. Um, and then it look it should look mostly like this. Uh, if for some reason Paper Lantern is not available, uh, you're probably using an old version of cPanel, so you might want to get your uh, host to just upgrade your version of cPanel or uh, move hosts to a better one or something. But yeah, uh, this is cPanel, and you can see on the sidebar over here we've got this. Uh, a bunch of different stats, right? Um, and these are stats that we are not really going to care about. We're not going to come look at them every day, but uh, it's just stuff to take note of, right? So disk usage, I mean, if we reach our limit here, we're not going to be able to upload any more files. So we just need to make sure that we monitor this when we're uploading files that we're not, uh, you know, um, trying to upload too much stuff so that our server space is full. Uh, then we've also got uh, a counter for email accounts and subdomains and SQL databases, etc. So this is kind of just everything that you paid for in your package should be showing up over here. And uh, you can see that my domain also appears. Uh, so this is a domain that I bought specifically for the series. And if you guys go to it right now, um, it just says josiecorp.com with this coming soon page. And uh, depending on when you watch this, this page might actually disappear. We're going to upload something there later on in the series. So uh, yeah, uh, that is the sidebar explained. Now let's take a look at all these different panels. And uh, some of this stuff is obviously really obvious. Uh, and then some things can be a little bit confusing, especially if you're a beginner. So uh, you can see that the first panel talks about files. And sometimes this might not be the first panel uh, because you can swap them around and change them if you want to. So I just wanted to uh, show you guys that. Uh, but yeah, uh, this is my file manager. And fi uh, file manager is what we use to upload, download, zip files, uh, and monitor files on our site. So if you ever want to do anything with files, you'll go to the file manager and I will be taking an in-depth look at this in a future tutorial. Then you see images over here and you think, okay, that's where I would go to see my images. But no, you actually see those in your file manager anyway. So uh, images is really just there to create thumbnails and stuff. Uh, not that I would ever use that. I don't think you guys will ever use this either, but it's there if you want it, so yeah. Uh, and then I'm going to skip over some of the stuff because directory privacy um, just means you can block certain directories or certain folders um, with a password so you can password protect them. Uh, disk usage, you can kind of see that over here. It's just how much usage you're using or how much space you're using. Uh, and then I want to take a look at FTP accounts and FTP connections. So uh, FTP accounts, uh, if you guys don't know what FTP stands for, it's File Transfer Protocol. And this is what web developers use to upload and download files more often than we use the file manager, just because FTP is so much fast, faster and we don't have to like uh, go through the trouble of using the browser because sometimes uh, these things have like a max upload size and you want to upload something a little bit bigger um, or you want to have the upload running in the background, then you can use an FTP program like FileZilla. Uh, and I'll talk more about that when I get to that tutorial. But yeah, uh, FTP is actually the real file upload and download uh, application or uh, process that we will talk about. And then I've got some uh, backup <laughs> wizards and backup options. So I can just make backups of uh, what's currently on my server and then uh, restore from that backup if anything goes wrong, like my website gets hacked or something like that. Then you can see we've got databases. 
and uh, databases are something that we need for WordPress and Joomla. I don't think I've ever explained databases to uh, my audience, but I know a lot of you guys will probably already know. So uh, yeah, PHP my admin is the section where we get to manage all the SQL stuff. So uh, we will run queries or create tables and everything like that in PHP my admin. Uh, MySQL databases is just where we set up a database uh, and we could use the wizard, but I'm gonna show you guys how to do it the proper way with uh, just this MySQL database uh, tab and we'll be doing that in a future tutorial. Uh, then we've got remote MySQL and this is if you ever wanted to set up a, a database on a different server and then connect to it uh, through here, then you could do that. But to be honest, you get an SQL or a SQL database with your hosting package. So most of the time, we're not gonna make use of remote MySQL. Uh, then we've got uh, email accounts. And this is where we get to set up new email accounts, set up email forwarders, like if someone goes out of the office and you wanna set up a forwarder for John's email to go to Sarah while John's on holiday, uh, something like that is what you would uh, use in forwarders. Uh, Autoresponders is like, again, when you're out of office and you just wanna let people know, you'd set up an autoresponder. And we can also set up a default address for when somebody sends an email to an email address that doesn't exist on your uh, domain. So if someone tried to send an email to not exist at josiecorp.com, I could send that somewhere. Like I could forward it to my own email address or something like that. Okay. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about track delivery and calendars and so on. Uh, you guys will be able to take a look at all of that. But uh, subdomains is something that I will be taking a look at uh, in the series. And subdomains, if you guys don't know what they are, is uh, just kind of a domain added onto your domain. So you can see that I've got josiecorp.com, but a subdomain might be something like uh, forum dot josiecorp.com. So if you ever wanna set up a subdomain, uh, that's pretty much how you'd set it up. Uh, you'd go to that little subdomain section over here. Uh, redirects, you can redirect your subdomains to another URL. Um, metrics is a complete waste of time. Uh, so metrics give you stats about visitors and bandwidth and so on, but uh, the visitors thing is really not, um, accurate at all, and neither are the all stats. So if you really wanna get um, statistics about people visiting your site, you should use Google Analytics, and that is a, a tracking thing by Google, which it would have to be a series on its own, but uh, yeah, that's just how you would track visitors to your site. It's like the world standard, everybody would use Google Analytics or something uh, similar, but yeah, most people just use Google Analytics because Google's Google and they own the world. Um, but yeah, uh, that <laughs> that is the all stats. We're not gonna take a look at those. Then we've got security, and here you can see we can uh, block IPs. So if you have uh, an IP range or a bunch of IP addresses that keep doing funny stuff to your site, uh, you can block their IPs. Um, and I'll show you guys how to do this, but uh, it's not something you would use very often, especially because it isn't very effective. Um, if someone's trying to hack your site from one IP, they'll just move to another one once it's blocked. Then you've got uh, hot link protection and leech protection and so on. And I'm actually not gonna talk about any of this other stuff in security, uh, mostly because it's not something we use every day. Uh, it's not something that needs to be used every day. Um, but it's there if you guys wanna take a look at it. Then we've got software. And uh, this is just gonna give me, if I click on PHP, uh, some specs about uh, the server. So uh, I'm gonna be able to see uh, language options. That's all turned off. But uh, I think the most important thing here is resource, which is your uh, memory limit and your file upload size. So this is kind of where you can see uh, what your max upload size is, two megs. Um, you could increase that if you wanted to, but again, on the web, we usually try keep all these files really small. So 
uh, that it doesn't make the page load really long. So if you are uploading a file that's bigger than two megs, you've got problems because your website's probably gonna load really slow. Uh, resource limits. Uh, sometimes people get this uh, this memory limit issue in uh, PHP, and then you have to bump up your your memory limits or your memory size. Uh, so right now it's at 64, which uh, you know isn't bad. Um, and then max execution time and max input time sometimes give uh, PHP errors. So you guys can just uh, take a look at them here, but we can't actually change them. We have to contact the hosting provider and ask them to change these kind of things. Um, and then I'm not gonna uh, go into any of this other stuff, but yeah, that's just if you wanted to guys if you guys wanted to get some information about your server, you'd look under the software tab over here. Um, then we've got advanced and cron jobs under advanced is something that's kind of cool because you can set a cron job to run like every hour or every day just to update something on your site. So if you've got a PHP script. Uh, that you want to run every day, you can uh, go into cron job, set that up, and it'll run. Uh, and then there's things like error pages, which would be your 404 pages and so on. And that's something that we'll probably be taking a look at. But MIME um, -E types and uh, Apache handlers is not something we use every day, especially as beginners. So I'm going to kind of skip over those. Uh, then preferences, I, I'm not even going to explain this. Changing language and changing password, you guys can do that on your own. But uh, yeah, if you guys ever get hacked, you might want to change your password. So there we go. Uh, and then this last tab, uh, Softaculous Apps Installer. This is something that you guys might not have access to on your uh, server. It's not available on all cPanel packages, but um, if it is there, Basically what it does is it allows you to quickly install a package of some like uh, very often used software. That was probably not good English. Some software that is used very often. Uh, so yeah, uh, you can download and install WordPress, Joomla 2.5, which is the old version of Joomla. So if you wanna get the new one, it's really uh, that version of Joomla over there. And we've worked with PrestaShop before, so you could also use a, <laughs> uh, download um, quick install thing from uh, Softaculous for uh, Press the Shop as well. And yeah, now we're at the bottom and we're uh, uh, pretty much covered everything. So uh, thank you for watching this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe. Please feel free to leave a comment, like and share this video because it's really gonna help my channel grow. And most importantly, don't forget to check out my website, josietuts.com and I'll see you guys next time.